Well, I've decided to make a short video to introduce the first section of chapter four, which is the extreme values of functions. And this first video is just going to go over some vocabulary so we can spend time in class getting to the meat of things. So I would like you to take notes on this, and you can expect to have a little quiz when you come into class um, over this information using your notes. So make sure to take notes. First of all, we're going to talk about this concept of absolute extrema. Now, when you're looking for absolute extrema, you're looking for the biggest or the smallest y value, OK? Now, here's the technical definition. When you have f be a function with the domain d, then f of c, so that is a y, an output within this function, will be an absolute maximum value if and only if f of c is greater or equal to f of x for all x. Okay, so that would be your greatest output. And the same thing happens for the absolute minimum value, where f of c is less than all of the values of x for f of x. Absolute extrema. Now, if we were to look at a function like this, we would be able to identify the absolute ma ma maximum minima. Now, this is actually a theorem, and this is called the extreme value theorem. Remember how we learned the intermediate value theorem a couple chapters ago, and that was IVT? Well, this one we kind of abbreviate as EVT. And this one, like the intermediate value theorem, is an existence theorem. It basically says that an extreme value will exist. Now, it will exist based on two if states, two conditions. If f is continuous on a closed interval, then, so that's the other condition, then f will have both a maximum and a minimum. So it's basically saying if you meet these two conditions, it's a closed interval and it's continuous, then you will have a maximum and a minimum. So you can see on this function here, our maximum would occur at x sub 2, and the absolute maxima is m. Okay, here our minima occurs at x sub 1, and the minimum is lowercase m. Okay? Now, we also have a few other key things here. Here's another graph. Okay, oh, let me move this. Oh, where should I move it? Right there. So now if we look at this example, it's a little different, but notice it's a closed interval and continuous. In here, we have a maximum, and notice the maxima is on the interior, and, and here would be my absolute minima, okay? Now, the absolute minima is an endpoint this time, okay? Let's look at a third example. So, on this example, we notice that the maxima and the minima both occur at endpoints, but it is continuous and it is closed. And the last type of scenario we could have is where the minima occurs on the interior, and the maximum occurs on an endpoint. But again, it's closed and continuous. Are you getting those two conditions? Closed and continuous. Um, so I'm gonna move on from this. So now if you were to look at this function, you notice that it's closed and you notice it's continuous. So therefore, because it's closed and continuous, we are going to have maximas and minimas, okay? Now, where is the absolute maxima and the absolute minima? Well, we can say that this is the absolute highest output for y, and this is the absolute lowest output. Okay, so when we look at those, we were correct. That would be the absolute minimum, and this would be our absolute maximum. Well, now, what would we call what's going on here at c? We can see that the um, derivative is zero, okay? And we do know this in this area, it is a maximum. So what do we call that? We call it a local maximum. So no greater value of f in the nearby region. And so then for this point, you can probably guess it, that's going to be a local minimum. No smaller value in the nearby area. And last of all, another local minimum is here at the end point. Okay, but we were guaranteed that an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum would be there. A way that I like to think of this is kind of like a chart like this. We, we have extreme values. And if I were to classify them, I could have a variety. I could have a, I could have a local maximum. I could have a local minimum. I could also have another local minimum and another local maximum, right? But are any of these local minimums or local maximums absolutes? Well, of course, especially if it's continuous and closed. 
Okay? So if we look at that previous example, so you can see how the chart matches this graph. We've got four, one, two, three, four, yes, four, one, two, no, that's five. I, I thought it was five. We have five different maximums or minimums, extremas, right? But only one of them can be the absolute minima, and that would be this. And then one of them can be the absolute maxima, okay? And then the rest then would be classified as local maximums or minimas. Okay, moving along. We're getting there, folks. So let me slide forward a couple. Okay, see, I told you, it's just defining some things here. Um, now, we've already talked about this. This is just the, you know, mathematical vocabulary. So a local maximum value at a point C is such that f of C is greater than f of x, all in some open interval C. Now, another phrase for this would be, instead of the local maximum, sometimes we call it a relative maximum. Now, the local minimum says the exact same thing. You have a point C, but this time f of C is less than f of x for all x in some open interval. We also can call this the relative minimum. Okay? Now, you can have a local maximum or a local minimum at an endpoint also. Okay? If it's closed and continuous. The last key phrase we want to talk about is critical points. Now, critical points is a phrase we will use for the rest of the year, and it's important that we all have the same definition. A critical point is a point in the interior of the domain of f, the function f, at which the derivative is equal to zero, or the derivative of f does not exist. Okay? So these are considered critical points, where the derivative equals zero or the derivative does not exist. And then relative extrema, so that means my maximum or my minimums, occur only at critical points and endpoints. Woo, got to remember that part. So at a critical point or an endpoint is where the maximums and minimums will occur. Okay? Very important. This will be the foundation for where we go for the, this chapter. Now, last thing. Now, notice, though, like, kind of like with differentiability and continuity, not all critical points are extreme values, okay? So, for example, the function y equals x cubed. We know this one very well, okay? So we have y equals x cubed. Now, at y equals x cubed, the derivative when x is 0 is 0, okay? The derivative is 0. So it's a critical point, okay? But is that x equals 0? Is that a relative extrema? No, it's not. Because notice the slope is positive the entire time. The slope does not change from positive to negative. In fact, if this is the f of x function, if we were to graph the f prime function of this, it would look something like this, right? So notice the derivative if it's positive the entire time, and at zero, the derivative is zero. However, that is a critical point because f prime of x equals zero, at x equals zero, but it is not an absolute extrema because it does not change from positive to negative. Sure. So that's all I have for now. Then when we come back into class tomorrow, we'll actually put this into practice.